everything is considered to be by some a drain on the economy. Yet I would argue that investing in naval shipbuilding is far from fiscal drain. And I'll take a few minutes to mention at least three reasons to explain what is sometimes perceived as a drain is not actually so. And that naval shipbuilding actually contributes handsomely to economic growth and nation building. The first reason I would like to state, I mean, it's nothing new, but I'll talk about is the plowback effect. By conservative estimates, a very large portion of every rupee spent on the Navy is ploughed back into the Indian economy. To start with, more than 60% of the naval budget is dedicated to capital expenditure. And nearly 70% of this capital budget has been spent on indigenous sourcing, amounting to nearly rupees 66,000 crores in the last five years. Since the launch of Make in India in 2014, 80% of the AONs in cost, on cost basis have been awarded to Indian vendors. And as you know, of the total 51 ships and submarines on order and various shipyards as on date, 49 are being constructed indigenously. So this highlights the considerable levels of plowback of naval shipbuilding into the economy. Each shipbuilding project also creates logistics, spares and project support ecosystems comprising the OEMs, ancillary industry, and very importantly, the MSMEs to support each platform. GRSC, uh, Calcutta for instance, has nearly 2,100 firms registered to support ongoing naval shipbuilding projects. And then subsequent ship repair and maintenance requirements over nearly three decades of a platform or ship's life lead to considerable investment in domestic industry. Nearly 90% of ship repair by value is undertaken by Indian vendors and mostly MSMEs, implying that in addition to the capital budget, a high proportion of Navy's revenue budget is also being ploughed back into the economy. So much for the ploughback effect. The second contribution that I would like to state on the, of naval shipbuilding is as a catalyst for empowerment, uh, sorry, employment generation and skill development which are present-day real challenges faced by our nation. There is a quote which says, give a man fish and feed him for a day, teach him fishing and feed him for a lifetime. Shipbuilding is, is such a skill activity. Each shipbuilding project involves considerable investment of manpower with commensurate employment and skilling of workforce. As platforms become more complex, skill levels are proportionately upgraded. Naval shipbuilding projects have made considerable, if often less, less acknowledged contribution towards employment and skilling. Studies show that labor employed for a given sum of industrial turnover is one of the highest in shipbuilding industry. Complexity of warship construction also implies much higher manpower absorption vis-a-vis -vis the commercial uh, construction. For instance, a manpower required to build a commercial ships of about 30,000 tons is less than the manpower employed for warship construction of around 6,000 tons. In addition, the warship construction requires a much higher ratio of white-collared workers vis-a-vis blue-collared workers, given the inherent complexities involved. So thus, employment opportunities are extended to more widespread educational backgrounds. And given the high number of educated youth, unemployed educated youth in our country, this is a very important driver. In addition, statistics show that the multiplier effect of one worker employed in a shipyard is approximately 6.4 on ancillary industry. Project 17 Alpha frigates, for instance, would employ a workforce about, of about 4,500 workers in the two yards but nearly 28,000 personnel per year as outsourced manpower will be employed in ancillary industry. Apart from individual skilling, naval projects also lead to creation of new capacities within shipyards. These are crucial spin-offs for the economy. The India's largest dry dock, which is under construction at Cochin Shipyard, for instance, will enable servicing of large-sized commercial ships, apart from aircraft carriers which was one of the prime movers for the project. Similarly, as brought out 
requirement of indigenous steel for IAC1 has led to development of the indigenous DMR249 alpha steel from DMRL Hyderabad, which is being employed in other naval projects as well. So the sale has supplied nearly 50,000 tons of steel, of indigenous steel, which was hitherto being imported. So in essence, shipbuilding has potential to contribute to other sectors as well in ways both tangible and intangible. 